what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, motherfucker. Say what one more goddamn time. Do I make myself clear? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie threats. Make a move and the bunny gets it. For this list, we're looking at specific movie threats that either implied something dangerous was going to happen or were direct and overtly clear. If you hang up, I will kill you. These are the big screen scenes that made characters squirm and shut their traps. Number 10. I'm going to cut your throat. There will be blood. Why not turn it over to us? We'll make you rich. Don't be telling no prospectors how to run their families. When a clean-cut businessman attempts to buy out fledgling oil tycoon Daniel Plainview in There Will Be Blood, he goes a little too far by playing Dr. Phil and offering family advice. You just tell me how to run my family. After a long, awkward pause and piercing stare, Mr. Plainview promises that there will, in fact, be blood. And it won't be pretty. One night I'm going to come to you inside of your house, wherever you're sleeping, and I'm going to cut your throat. This threat was like saying, your ass is grass, and I'm the lawnmower, and yes, I will actually kill you. Kind of like Daniel Day-Lewis's threat in Gangs of New York. I'm gonna teach you to speak English with this fucking knife! Number 9. Ominous Plans, Cape Fear. Well, I'm open to some sort of discussion on compensation. Perhaps it was the tattoos, or maybe it was his rapist past. But Max Cady simply conveys a troubling demeanor in Martin Scorsese's remake of a 1962 classic. Well, what shall be my compensation, sir, for being held down sodomized by four white guys or oh, four black guys? After taking up permanent residency in the clink due to his lawyer's inadequacy, De Niro's character teaches himself not only to read, but also the law. Well, let's just break that down. Incidentally, he also tracks down his former lawyer and terrorizes his entire family with passive-aggressive behavior and a few direct zingers. I can outthink you, and I can outphilosophize you. Sam Bowden attempts to resolve the issue by hiring a private investigator, but Max Cady has something entirely different in mind. No, he doesn't want to start a Hawaiian shirt company. He wants to get down and dirty, and not on the dance floor. It's not necessary to lay a foul tongue on me, my friend. I could get upset, things could get out of hand. And then in self-defense, I could do something to you that you would not like right here. Number eight, Human Popsicle, The Warriors. Keep Keep when a monster gang war breaks out in New York City and your opponent is wearing makeup and a baseball uniform, there's a select group of threats that are always perfect for the occasion. Did we lose these pounds or what? Look, holy shit. Case in point, when one of the Baseball Furies confronts the Warriors crew, an angry Ajax delivers an appropriate zinger, complete with Popsicle reference. I'll shove that bat up your ass and turn you into a Popsicle. It's unclear if the Baseball Fury was stunned by Ajax's deep cleavage, or if he was legitimately scared about a Louisville slugger penetrating his backside. All in all, the intensity of the insult was bold and impressive. And we could see it all over the insult receiver's face. Number seven, one time warning, Scarface. Why don't I go back and talk to Frank? I work it out. Here's a shocker international drug lords don't like to give second chances to people who screw them over. He was an informer for the police. And they will always speak in calm and collected voices to express their displeasure. I think you and me, we can work this thing out. We do business together a long time. Oh, and they usually murder someone in front of you to drive home their points. He put Vito Duval and the Ramos brothers, Nello and Gino, away for life. Such was the case in Brian De Palma's Scarface, as Alejandro Sosa reminds the ambitious Tony Montana how things work, especially in his own backyard. I only tell you one time. Tony. Don't you ever try to me. The delivery of this threat was poignant and well articulated, since he could have just launched Tony from a helicopter. Number six, Head Collector, Kill Bill, Volume One. The man who seems bound and determined to break the mood is Boss Tanaka. If you want to become the ultimate queen of the Tokyo underground, then you have to make a few things clear. Minasan. 
Tanaka Naoyaku. For example, when a frustrated council member named Tanaka publicly insults his new boss, it takes about three seconds for his head to roll and a bloody rain to shower over the frightened guests. <laughs> to make herself even more clear, Oren uses her translator and delivers a brief yet potent threat about how future business will be conducted. The price you pay for bringing up either my Chinese or American heritage as a negative is, I collect your f***ing head. Crazy eyes, blood-stained face, head in hand. Three cues to shut up and obey orders. Now if any of you sons of bitches got anything else to say, now's the f***ing time! Number five, I will gouge your eyeballs out and full metal jacket. I am Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, your senior drill instructor. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. As a real-life sergeant during the Vietnam War. You got a war face? Ah! That's a war face! R. Lee Ermey required little guidance for his performance in Stanley Kubrick's wartime classic. Sir, no, sir! How tall are you, Private? Sir, five foot nine, sir! Five foot nine! I didn't know they stacked shit that high! Once a new set of recruits arrives at Paris Island, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman unleashes a verbal assault and lays down the law of the land. I bet you're the kind of guy that would f person in the ass and not even have the goddamn common courtesy to give him a reach around. One particular soldier finds the rants quite hilarious, which leads to one of the most inventive and powerful threats of all time. No, Hartman won't just gouge out the eyes of Private Leonard Lawrence. He's also gonna take advantage of his skull. Private Pile, I'm gonna give you three seconds. Exactly three seconds to wipe that stupid looking grin off your face or I will gouge out your eyeballs and skull f you! Number four, Brain Basher, The Shining. I must be losing my mind. <laughs> All death and no threat makes Jack a dull poet of red rum. I don't think that's true. In Stanley Kubrick's classic film, Jack Nicholson's character goes mental and completely loses his mind. Wendy, I'm home. As Jack Torrance and wife Wendy ascend a staircase at the Overlook Hotel, the deranged writer drops a serious truth bomb on the frightened woman, who offers up the worst baseball swing ever seen on screen. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains in. I'm gonna bash them right the f in. Regardless, Wendy still manages to connect a line drive smash right up against Crazy Jack's mug. <laughs> Look who's talking now. Number three, family loyalty, the Godfather. Fredo, I'm here on business. I leave tomorrow and I get rid of them. Spoken calmly and quietly, this movie threat rang loud and clear. Hey, come on, scram! After Michael Corleone and company roll into Vegas, it's discovered that brother Fredo has been horsing around at Mo Green's hotel. What happened to Mo Green? He said he had some business. He said give him a call when the party started. But rather than defending the family name, Fredo gets punked not once, but twice. And the younger Corleone puts the matter to rest. Fredo, you're my older brother, and I love you. But don't ever take sides with anyone against the family again. Ever. When a mob boss ends a sentence with ever, then he usually means business. Al Pacino produced a similar threat in Brian De Palma's Carlito's Way. That was almost as memorable, but equally menacing. Now if I ever, I mean if I ever see you here again, you die just like that. Number two, I will find you and I will kill you, taken. Mills, Brian Mills. This snarling threat was delivered like a boss, albeit a rather concerned one. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. When Kim Mills and her U2 loving friends arrive in Paris for a European adventure, they get snatched up, but only after a well-timed phone call to daddy. If you are looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money, but what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Before taking his threat overseas, Brian Mills, a retired CIA operative, reminds his nemesis how things will go down. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. 
If you let my daughter go now, that'll be the end of it. He doesn't trash the room, nor does he scream like a madman. He just offers up a few facts, and it is amazing. I will not look for you. I will not pursue you. But if you don't, I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. How about this? Shut your mouth. I'll kick your teeth down your throat and I'll shut it for you. If you deliberately sabotage my band, I will fuck you like a pig. What if my problem wasn't that I don't understand people, but that I don't like them? What if I was obliged to hurt you for something like this? I'm giving you a choice. Either put on these glasses or start eating that trash can. Hey, pig, you ever had your shit pushed in? <laughs> your shit pushed in. Simple question. Number one, do you feel lucky? Dirty Harry. I know what you're thinking. Did he fire six shots or only five? Well, to tell you the truth in all this excitement, I've kind of lost track myself. Please, Harry, don't hurt him. While tracking down a psycho serial killer on the mean streets of San Francisco, homicide inspector Harry Callahan thwarts a robbery by taking out two of three gunmen, and then delivers the ultimate movie threat upon finding the third. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? You might call Dirty Harry a policeman poet of the streets, as he precedes his threat with a fantastic soliloquy of truth or dare. You know what happens next. Clint Eastwood slays the scene with cool tenacity. Hey. I got to know. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite movie threat? If you come near Danny again, I will feed you your f***ing heart, Cameron. For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com or else.